effort to rebrand the country as a top destination for a fun, sunny holiday. All of Israel are happy and uh, we wish good luck to our uh, uh, candidates. We're feeling hopeful, yeah. Winning in the air. Yeah. It's great to be here in Israel, Tel Aviv. But Eurovision comes at a tense time for the country after a flare-up of violence between militants in Gaza and the Israeli army last week. A shaky ceasefire was restored just as rehearsals started. And some activists are calling for a boycott <laughs> over Israel's treatment of Palestinians. We want them to stop the party, to come with us, to work together, and to see there is another another thing that happened 100 kilometers from them. Stop, don't say a word. I know just what you heard, that it's a land of war and occupation. The conflict got a mention in a satirical promo about Israel made by the state broadcaster. And there's a lot here to be seen. Praised by some as self-deprecating. You'll see the prices, you'll say what? Slammed by others for making light of stereotypes. Most of us are Jews, but only some of us are green. Everywhere you look, Israelis are thinking about their country's image. Breaking the silence, an NGO representing former soldiers calling on Israel to withdraw from the West Bank bought a billboard along the road from the airport into the city, playing on the Eurovision theme, Dare to Dream. For us, if we want to build bridges through, through music, we need to uh, uh, take apart walls that are being built by occupation. At Eurovision, though, the message is one of unity and leaving politics off the stage. Yeah. Reigning champion Netta Barzilai brought the competition to her home country with the song Toy, about inclusivity and positivity, a feeling she hopes permeates this year's contest. From all these countries, all these cultures combined together, this is a festival of light. For people to boycott light is spreading darkness. Politics or not, the show will go on as Eurovision chooses next year's sound and vision.